All right, so we're gonna sign up for a tour. So that should be fun. We're gonna get in the van. They're gonna show us all the all the tracks. Do a little tour for us. So it should be pretty fun. This uh, GoPro locked up on me again, so I'm not sure what I got for battery. So um, we'll see. Be strong. Be strong. All right, so we signed up for a tour. We're gonna get on this van here. And they're gonna give us a tour of the track, which will be good because we'll get a little narration with it. And uh, maybe I'll be able to film a little from the van. That'll be pretty good. So I'll show you. I don't think I showed you guys inside what it looks like in here. Eight million dollars to achieve that, they sold stock at one dollar a share. The first race on this track was the World 600 race that was in June 1960. It was won by Joe Lee Johnson. He won a purse of twenty-seven thousand. $150. Now in the mid-70s, Curtis Turner was killed in the airplane crash. Bruton Smith had acquired enough stock to become the majority stockholder and owner of the site. He hired H.A. Humpy Wheeler to be his president and general manager. Together they formed Speedway Motorsports Incorporated, a corporation that now owns eight tracks. They own a land at Charlotte, Bristol, Sears Point, Texas, Las Vegas, Loudon in Kentucky. The eight tracks owned by SMI Corporation. On the right is our campground. It's called the Tom Johnson Camping Facility. We have all the hookups. It's a campground that's open year-round. On the left is our campground too, but right now the dealership over there is leasing part of it to store his inventory <laughs> off-season. So those are all for sale over there. Those are all camping. Now there's three infield tracks aside from the major track and there's three on the perimeter raceway. I'll tell you what they all are and what they're used for as we get to each one of them. Counting the major track, we have a total of seven tracks on this complex. First track we'll talk about is our drag strip here. We opened our drag strip about eight years ago. It's a quarter mile drag strip with a 4,000 foot runoff and a 200 foot collection area. It has 30,000 seats, cost $60 million to build it. It's one of two four lane all cement drag strips in the country. The other one is in Las Vegas and we own that one also. Four lane all cement drag strips. Does that give you better speed when it's cement? Yeah, uh, more stability. Oh, okay. Uh, John Force Grandstand, we named it after John Force, famous guy in funny cars, so we named it Grandstand after him. On the ground here, the staging area, we have two staging areas, one on this side for lanes one and two, one on the other side for lanes three and four. All our heats are four wide, four at a time. All our championship races are two wide alternating. Now you got a good look at the track. Four lane, all spent. 
Also in front of us, the uh, grandstand, multicolored seats. Anybody know why? To make it look like you got a lot of people? Yeah, it's a gimmick. <laughs> if you stand far enough away, take pictures far enough away, it looks like it's full of people. Yeah. We do that for two reasons. We have a lot of photo shoots, a lot of commercials. When they scan the stands, it looks like it's full of people. It's a good image for us. Also, during event time, it looks like we sold out. Right here is our start stop line for the track. There's a Christmas tree for these two lanes and a Christmas tree over there for those two lanes. Now, everybody here runs quarter mile except NHRA. They still run a thousand feet, and I'll show you a thousand foot markers. If you look out on the center wall out here, you see that black marker with the red sign out here? That's a thousand feet. That's where they ran 332 miles per hour, and they did it in 3.8 seconds. From up there to here, 3.8 seconds. Hmm. Now these are the quarter mile towers right here. Everybody else runs quarter mile. Now from here down is what we call the runoff area. This is uh, where they employ the drag chutes and the brakes. Hopefully that will stop them. If not, we have an area down here called the collection area. And I'll explain that when we get down here. Pick up all the parts. Hmm? Pick up all the parts. Yeah, what, <laughs> whatever makes it down here, right. Yeah. Sometimes not very much. Uh, one of the problems with uh, these cars is they hit the sidewalls, they disintegrate. They never make it down here. Here we have uh, 200 feet of sand and gravel. It's about two foot deep in there. If you go in there, you snow plane. It's called soft impact, it absorbs energy. Oh, yeah. Then behind that, we have two high impact catch nets. And they're designed after aircraft carriers. They're also soft impact, they absorb energy. Behind that, barrels of sand, barrels of water, they're hard impact, they will stop you. Hopefully we'll never have anybody reach that area. We've only had two cars go into the gravel in eight years, and they stopped before they got to the nets. I got the heat turned down. For World of Outlaw, for late models, for modifieds, for big block, and for sprints. And when they came in, they filled this place up. We had a lot of vehicles here running on track. And uh, we sold out as far as tickets. here billboards this is where they park the haulers when they come in here and this they take the hop the cars off the haulers and uh, get them all ready for track and then they run them around the road here the perimeter road of the track and they enter the track up on top up there and I'll show you where they enter there. If you look in the center of the field, you'll see the boxes for a Musco light system. The light is in those gray boxes, shows up onto reflectors, and the reflected light then goes out on track. All the light going on our track is reflective lighting. We have no direct lighting on track. No glare. Therefore, we have less glare and less shadowing on track. A very popular system with the drivers, by the way, Musco lights. If you look across the track over there, you see it little piece of yellow wall over there that's where they actually enter the track they enter over there they do their 10 12 15 20 laps whatever it is and they exit over here on this where this yellow wall is it mm, yep and when they come off they either go to the right and go down to the haulers and work on their car or they take a left and get back in line for another heat This area to the right here is in the big go-kart track where we're uh, rebuilding the go-kart track. Uh, 
during the uh, last 11 months, we tore out the whole infield and put all new drainage pipes underneath the ground. When we did that, we destroyed the original go-kart track out there. So now they're rebuilding it. We're going to have a brand new go-kart track out there. It's a road course for go-karts. It will consist of probably around eight, between 8 and 11 S-turns out there. So that's what they're rebuilding out there. That's where all that construction work is being done. Go-kart track. Also look way over to the right. You see that superstructure over there? We used to have 3,000 seats that sat above that. We took the seats out, we left the superstructure up there. And we put up 960 solar panels up there. We're making power for our own site. That's also called our sun deck, fun deck area, party deck. <laughs> and uh, what they do is they, uh, they set that up during the race weeks and they uh, have a big party up there it's all week long. And they even have a Ferris wheel up there for the people. But you can go up there, if you got a ticket to the race, it's free entry up there. You can go up there and party all you want. This new cement area on the right is the past driver area I was telling you about. We used to have a small area, had only 15 slots. Now we've expanded it, we've got 25 slots. And that's uh, up there and tells the driver what's ahead of him, what's in back of him, what he can expect on track. So if you have 40 cars starting the race, you'll have 40 spotters up on top up there. Now we've entered the second major garage area. This is the Monster Energy Cup Garage. First bay has no number on it, that's the inspection bay. Bay one here is always reserved for the guy who won the points championship last year. That was Logano, now it's Kyle Busch. The rest of the garage is lining up according to how the cars sit in the point standings. <coughs> Now take a look left over here. You see our big screen TV. We put that TV up about eight years ago. It's 80 by 200 feet. That's 16,000 square feet of screen. It has 9.3 million LEDs in it. It was put up by Panasonic. Weighs uh, 80 ton. It was the largest flat screen LED TV in the world. But guess what? We're second now. <laughs> our own racetrack in Texas put up a bigger one. <laughs> On the left over there, white top building is our Goodyear Tire Barn. Now Goodyear Tires are used on both Cup cars and Xfinity cars. On a given race day, they'll go through 2,000 tires at about uh, $650 per tire. Also on the left over there is what we call the uh, Winter Circle Lounge. It's a VIP lounge area, lounge area right over here on the left. I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. Stop line, that's the flag tower. That's what they uh, flag everybody. I'm going to take you up on 24 degrees, show you what that feels like. Keep in mind Daytona is 31, Bristol 30, Talladega 33. This is only 24 degrees, but it'll give you an idea what the rest of the tracks must feel like. I got a tool truck behind me, so I'm not going to stop up here. <laughs> Normally I stop up here, but uh, oh I don't want to hold him up. Now, average speed on this track. Scary when you average slow. speed is uh, 170. Record speed, 198.7. That was done by Kurt Busch. He did it in qualifying a couple years ago.
Denningham. I wish they was. I had the, the bucks that go with it. they want to pit, they notify their crew chief they're coming in. They can drop a load of lines on the left here at any time. Once they drop a load of lines, they are committed. As they come down pit road, they're looking for their pit board. When they see their pit board, they swing into the pits. Now they have to stop between the two yellow lines. Once they once they get their tires and gas, they then go back out here and uh, go ahead, Dick. Uh, tour van is off track. Thanks a lot. Thank you, tour van. The average pit time for four tires and gas. About 18 seconds. Four tires and gas in 18 <laughs> seconds. I don't know what they have in here. Is that Ghostbusters? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we that. saw him in line. Oh this something? That is cool. <laughs> I was hoping he'd stay there. I'd stop and we could take pictures. That's great. I don't know where he's going. They're taking pictures inside of uh, Winter Circle here. Winter Circle, yeah. Oh. Wow. That's a nice car. Uh, let me do this garage first and maybe they'll be gone and we'll stop at Winter Circle. Right here is the media center, front part of the building here where all the media, this is where all the media sports writers sit right there. The back part of the building is an auditorium and that's where they have the driver's meetings, press conferences. Right, and, I don't think we have anybody else roll out. Things like that. On the left here, now you got a picture of that Roval racer. You see it? The black that goes all the way around has 17 turns in it. You can see the two chicanes. Uh, turns uh, 11, 12, and then also uh, 15, 16, and 17. See them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the Roval Racetrack. They have a lot of fun with that track. Uh, we opened that track a year ago, September. The first race on it uh, was won by uh, Ryan Blaney. Huh. This year it was won by Chase Elliott. I don't know if you watched that, but Chase Elliott hit the wall. Uh, I'll tell you where he hit the wall. He hit it over by uh, turn uh, nine there. See it? Yeah. Oh, no, that eight. That's eight. Turn eight. Hit the wall and he still won the race. Then he come back to that same wall and burned his tires out. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that on TV. It was kind of funny. Okay. So that's the Robo racetrack, folks. And that part of that track is out here to the left. Right here on the left. That's part of the Robo racetrack right here. Mm. Track within a track. Now we're in the third major garage area. This is the Xfinity garage under Comcast. Xfinity. Two buildings over there on your left with the blue windows are the condominiums that are on site. That first long building was built in 1984. There's 40 units in there. They're 1,200 square foot two bedroom units. Original cost $35,000. Second building built in 1991. 
there's 12 units in there, there's 1,600 square foot units. That dome unit up on top is a penthouse suite that belongs to Felix Sabatis. He paid a half a million dollars for it, called it the Amigo Dome. <laughs> now there's 10 families that live in those condos year round. Retired people, businessmen, the rest of the condos are all owned by drivers, owners, and sponsors. They let them out as they see fit. The average cost of those condos today, three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. Also, look left. This big grandstand here is Ford Grandstand. Now we rebuilt that in 1999. Twenty-two thousand seats, fifteen VIP suites. Ford donated fourteen million dollars to get that built. It sits 192 feet off the infield. We call it the nosebleed seats. The checkered flag with confetti trailing up on top is the logo of the Speedway Club. Justin? On the left here. These are called pit suites here. We have 12 of them. Each pit suite holds 16 people. Each pit suite costs $50,000 to rent for the year. Now the people who use these pit suites get to use a winter circle lounge that was behind gas signal. They go in there, they party, they have food, they have drink, it's air conditioned. Once the race starts, they walk out here and they go up in the pit suites and watch the race from the pit suites. He's got the circuit board there. Wow. Look at this, Ghostbusters. Seen, um, Look at these, these three guys here get kicked out of college because they suck at being scientists, and we're supposed to believe Egon can get his hands on plutonium to power the proton packs? <laughs> Where the hell is he getting plutonium from? Black market? No, he's friends with Doc Brown. True. Right? O'Reilly's has the flux capacitor on sale. If you go put their part number in. I've already got one. I don't need yeah. it. It's got a flux capacitor. It's in the back of the <laughs> Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh. It's in there. Every time I make a mistake, I just go back in time and fix it. Yeah, Except for my last divorce, I'm going to fix that. want to fix it? No, I didn't get married for five months. Wild, yeah. Right? What did, did he did he have stuff in the back too? Um, I don't know. We didn't Look, see that. Looks like it was a converted hearse or something. Huh? I'm down for a Did I? Oh yeah. Did I hear a blow off out? That was a. great time out here all right so we are done here at the charlotte motor speedway the sun has come out it's an awesome awesome day it is not that cold at all um i mean you need a jacket i guess but uh so we're gonna head over to hendrick now we're gonna check out hendrick motorsports right up the street from here